I don't know why I'm just going to sit here and introduce this lady, because she can't stop talking. But this is Ken Gidge, and this is Acho Art Sales. We created this here at Access Nashua to do what? Well, to bring artists, interesting people, interesting work. We will tell you during the show where you might be able to see more of their work. That means you can go see their work, and maybe you'll want to buy it. As time goes on, we will be having art shows inside this studio. We will pull it apart. We will put up places to hang paintings or put up sculpture. You can come in. You can buy some. You can look at it. We'll introduce, uh, introduce you to the place, because uh, this is your station. So I think that's very important that you come down here and uh, help the artist, the artist we have today, who is absolutely crazy. Her name is Trish, Trish Ewens. How are you? Good, how are you doing? No, I'm not sure if that's a good way to introduce you, but if they, they would have seen before the show, I mean. But I'm a wacky artist. Yo, yo, absolutely. That's a, we, uh, all artists are a little crazy. Would you agree? Maybe. Well, we, or maybe they're just not good at hiding it. It's the people that hide it. You know, the stockbrokers, they're crazy underneath. They just, so artists, artists, artists are just, they're just more out. They just, they just let it out. Everybody's a little bit crazy. That's a, that's a good way. Yeah, that's true. It's the people that hide it. They're the ones you should be scared of. Yeah. The, <laughs> I don't want to get into politics. They, they, Those appear, are the they appear normal. No, no, no. Uh, uh, you, well, you have sculpture. So why don't you pick this one up and just hold it. Okay, uh, just t slightly turn it, uh, turn it towards me. More, 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 so people can see it. Okay, great. You can you can put it down now. Uh, this is very intricate work, and it's small. But first, how did you get in sculpting? Uh, third grade, Mrs. Bandis, clay class. Is she still alive? We'll call her I up. Wish, I, I wish she would. I wish she'd. I don't know. That was a really long time ago. But yeah, she got me into clay. Um, she, I was making something. I got really into it. I was like eight years old. I got into what's known as the flow state. And I was having this amazing thing. And then I got up. And then I noticed she got really excited. I don't think I really excited an adult before like that. She called another adult over. And then apparently I'd done something important, but only to like my eight-year-old brain. And my eight-year-old brain, wow, I must have done something important. And she really liked the conch shell I made. So that was just the beginning. Well, if people out there uh, don't think that art is important in art teachers, uh, I think they're very much mistaken. I talk a lot about how they have cut money for the arts here in the uh, state. Also, they've cut out art classes in and uh, high schools, and junior high schools, and grade schools. Well, I should say there's more art in grade schools to keep the kids quiet. Uh, but you got this from the third grade? Yeah, I think that was the first. I actually remember the first thing I made out of clay. You do? What was it? It was a conch shell. It was a what? Conch shell. You know conch shells in the ocean? The oh, yes, yes, conch yes. Shell. Real? Oh, really? Yeah, which actually has some significance, historical significance. The conch shells are beautiful and amazing. Did you, did you just do nature. it by your mind? No, she had brought in stuff for us to make, like shells and stuff, and I just had made, a, I guess, a conch shell she really liked. So she brought the work in. and you, Now, have you uh, training oh, besides, um, besides your third grade teacher? Yeah, so uh, no, I went to college. I went to Curry College in Milton, Mass. Um, I majored in fine arts, something completely unpractical, but I was a really terrible student, and I'm actually dyslexic, which is probably why I'm attracted to art, because it's a way to express yourself when reading and writing were kind of difficult for me to, like, you know, I, I had a hard way of expressing my intelligence, because I couldn't do it by writing a paper, but I could do it by making a sculpture. So, wow. you know, it's very, very basic. And that's fine because sculptures, you know, I mean, most of human history people were illiterate. So sculptures were a way to communicate stories and narratives to people who couldn't read it in a book. So um, 
I'm see, I think I'm doing something very, very basic. Really? And, uh, yeah, very, very historical and very, very basic. It's all of human do you, history. Do you think that way? That that when you start something out, do you, do you feel like you're going to come up with something great, or or no? But it's are you, are you in, in this in this piece right here, which uh, which you can see is it's it's very complex, and we will have pictures up later of it. This is a very complex piece of work. It's about what a foot, thirteen inches high, something like. Yeah, that. it's a little bit smaller. Okay, no, just hold on. You have a sad face over here, a mean face. Yeah, so this is like um, a personal narrative. Now, this one's kind of juicy because it has like all the fun stuff, sex and violence, and uh, all the juicy. Not not all my artwork is sex so, and violence. Not no, all my artwork is, is no. so salacious. But oh, I, oh, I didn't piece, see the hands. Okay. It, it kind of is about that. It looks like Gumby's attacking this. Yeah, so it has that kind of cartoonish thing. So it's kind of got a sense of humor to it. Uh, even though it is about sex and violence, um, it's kind of got this two-dimensional figure, which well, literally is two-dimensional. Well, when I, I mean, looked at it, I didn't think of... voluptuous woman with rolling flesh. Yes, it looks very nice. <laughs> uh, very good, and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> we can show that here. So but, it's like a but, classical. But you know, it's not. No, it's it's a beautiful piece of work. And I didn't really think of the sex and violence, but now I see Gumby is attacking her. I, <laughs> I kind of like that. But and, it's uh, up for her interpretation. Why don't you hold this one up? Because this is going to be a little hotter, okay? Because this one's kind of, I like this, this one. This one's not so salacious. This one's more cute and comical and simple. It's called, it's called plain hat, and it's just that, a plain hat. So she has a hat for a plane. And of course, this is like classical sculpture, but with a little bit of a twist where you have kind of like, kind of s stupid mismatching eras in human history and, and maybe a crossword puzzle looking stand here. So this one's more kind of playful. Well, it looks, I, I love it because you says. But classical too. It, yeah, down again. Yeah, that's so, so you reference classical. You know, this, I'm, not, I'm it, not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to communicate simply to most people. I, I don't want them to have like a, like a PhD to understand what I'm talking about. I don't want to alienate people. I want to like communicate pe with people. You're trying to say that really your work is simplistic and it's not. It's simplistic it's maybe to look both. at. So it should work on a number of levels. It should be, should be beautiful. I enjoy looking at it. And it just, it could be simple, but it also could be complicated, too. And it could be both things at the same time. Depending on your level of understanding of art? You know, depending on, on how you're feeling. I mean, you look at, you know, I, I have intention when I make something. So I make this with intention. And I have intentions. And then maybe you're in a certain mood. And then something strikes, the visual narrative strikes you in the right way at the right time. And then it means something to you. It's kind of like the slow information uh, movement, I think. So you know how like a lot of YouTubes is quick information, jazzy information, things exploding, things hysterically funny. Slow information. This is this is an art object that is permanent, and it might exist fifty years, a hundred years. It might ex it might end up in a thrift store for two dollars, but it will live beyond the life of our physical bodies. So our bodies are very like, you know, we live, you know. 90 years tops. This object is now stone because it's ceramic. It can live indefinitely. So it's like um, frozen gesture. So it's literally frozen gesture. OK. Uh, the plane on the head is the reason? Is that your dyslexia that was, working? That was just like just, just fun, plain hat. I was kind of inspired by the 90s. Um, uh, like uh, They had like a punk rock movement in Japan. Oh, yes. In the yes, 90s, yes, yes. remember the fruits? Yes, I remember. And they were just yes. wacky, and they were just fun, they were just playful, and that was their way of rebelling against a tight, serious society. So this is a little bit about that. This is just playful Do you have, is, is there a, a, an Asian influence in this? Maybe, maybe a little Art Nouveau, maybe a little 1930s. I like kind of like the 1920s and 30s. Yes. And, Yes. Stuff like that. Art Deco. Art Deco, yeah, that's what I was looking yeah. for. Art Deco. Uh, and also, is this Egyptian? Yeah, so they had a little throwback. I forget if it was like in the 20s or something for Egyptian that was kind of in a fad because they had 
doing so many art, interesting archaeological digs and stuff like that. So it's just a throwback to a lot of different eras and a lot of different fun and, and about time. She's wearing a watch over here. Okay, now uh, you do this in clay. Is that how you started it out? Yep. Okay, explain the process because this is fired, means it's been in a kiln. Mm -hmm. So explain from the very beginning to end. How do you, you come up with this? Is this in your mind? Is this from a picture? Is this a uh, pot picture, the rest of you? How do you get to this? So, um, so we're, so th this, could, this could be from anywhere. So we're constantly bombarded with tons of information from all sources, books, television, friends, clothing. Goes through the filter of our brains and ends up out of our fingertips. So it's kind of a little bit of a stream of consciousness thing. I'm not always planning out everything I should do. Maybe I should do that more. Maybe I shouldn't. No. No, just kind That's of let it, it go. No, no, you yeah, I, t I try to work every day. And, you know, some of it you self-edit, and some of it you just, you just make it. And then afterwards go, what the heck did I, what the heck is that about? You know, it's like when you have a dream at night, and then you go, that was a really weird dream. What the heck was that about? Same thing when you're in the process of making art, like this piece over here. I didn't necessarily plan this piece, but I made it in sort of a stream of consciousness sort of sense. And then afterwards I'm like, what? What was that about? <laughs> and then I wonder what's it about. Now this is I don't a, always know. Did, did, you, did you do this and then put the base on, or did you, you didn't work out, I take it? Uh, you're supposed to, oh, you know that. Yeah, you're actually, I think a lot of artists work up, and you're supposed to work out. But I've been doing, like, making stuff solid, and then cutting it in half, and then piecing it together. So really, that's kind of not the way you're supposed to work. I'm actually making it harder. Uh, myself, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. No, no, that, no, no. Uh, you, you work any way you want. If this that's works and it comes say. out like this, don't know. Well, that's what they say. Who's they? Famous, I mean, they famous artists. So, well, <laughs> so. Okay. you know the difference between you and a famous artist is yeah. you're not famous yet. That's all. Because well, I just work don't know a lot of really rich people. Nice. That's, this is a, that's the difference between me and a famous Well, you're not artist. sitting with one they, either. I'll tell they you know that. lots of rich people. I don't. Okay, now <laughs> this, is, this is clay, correct? Yep. Now, the color in there is done how? So, um, it's a combination of underglazes. This is actually nail polish, a series of washes. This is actually acrylic. When you say magic nail polish, marker. this is painted in here as nail polish. Yeah, this is nail polish. Okay, washes is what? Uh, washes are like underglazes, could be watercolor, um, uh, anything to get the effect of the wand. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not like a purist ceramicist where I only do glaze and it must be glaze and that's the pure classical way people work. Um, this one's just like a little bit of whatever. No, and then you put this, has been in an oven? Yeah, it's been a kiln. So this is mud. So mud turned into stone. So it goes to the kiln at something like 2,000 degrees for 12 hours and it becomes like stone. So <laughs> it's like, no, no, it's like I, you're making no, stone. No, I, no, so I understand cool. how it works. I, I just, uh, this I is don't just really a. I understand how it works, but. It, because that's when the, you know, the paints, so in, your, in your case, the nail polish falls in and, and the wash and, and that all comes out. Uh, this is, this is really very interesting work, and, and I hope uh, people will find your work. Uh, where can they find your work? Do you have a website, I take it? No, I don't have a website. I do You're have on a Facebook? Facebook. I am on Facebook, and I have a Facebook artist page, so I have some stuff up on there. So if anyone wanted to get in touch with me, Facebook would be a great place because I'm on Facebook like a nerd all the time and going and through my I, phone like everybody else, playing with my phone all day, so... And it's under Trish Ewan, I take it? Yeah, Trish Ewan's. Okay, Ewan's or you? Ewan's. Ewan's. Now, you're from the Boston area? Yeah, my family, um, my mom's side of the family, yeah. They're all from the Boston area for generations. And you, how'd you get to Nashua? Well, I think uh, my mom bought a house here about 20 years ago. Um, by that time, I'm kind of revealing my age a little bit, but I was already grown up and moved out of the house by 18. So after I had kind of moved out, uh, she bought a house, and so I'd come here every Christmas, and now I've returned home. Um, Do you work out of your home right now? No, I, no, I, don't, I don't have a studio space. 
I'm actually looking for a studio space, so if anybody knows of any other ceramic artists looking to share a studio space, that would be kind of ideal. I'm taking a ceramics class at Mudflap Studios in Somerville, Massachusetts right now, and soon to be, I'm taking a class in Manchester Institute of Art soon, I'm starting there. But I would like to graduate and have my own studio. Well, that's a goal of mine. And yeah, before the show, you did mention that you were going to take, you know, art classes uh, in Manchester, and I said, bring a piece, uh, do that because I think the the teacher will take a look at it, might say, well, okay, uh, we don't have to do the basics with this individual. So, mm -hmm. it's I think it's very important. You have another one. It's just I love this one. This one you can hang on the wall. I take it. Oh, you're very sweet. So yeah, I I don't always have. Um, some of my stuff's on walls. This is another visual narrative. Um, it's actually kind of a love poem to an ex-boyfriend of mine. But um, love poem. Yeah. <laughs> so so are, you on the, are you on the phone? <laughs> so this is me. That well, this isn't me, but this is like your the heart. She's holding the heart, her heart in her hand. Uh, no, to me it looks like an this, urn. You you you've got your boyfriend. You've, no. You've, you've been, <laughs> And there's the urn. Okay, no, that looks like a urn to me. Urn. No, it's supposed to be like an anatomically correct human heart. So she's holding her heart in her hand and she's calling the universe. And this is like a classic. She's calling the universe. The universe is calling. So what, what this means is like pay attention because the universe is guiding you. It's classical hippie kind of philosophy. I don't know. I was kind of reading the Tao back then. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is just like the universe. It's about love and. And that can be put on the wall. So this can be hung on the wall. Yep. And that has been fired, obviously. It's like a little positive affirmation. Yep, I like to make a lot of positive stuff, not always like dramatic stuff. Yep, it's been fired. It can hang on the wall. Wow. Now, what would a piece like that cost? What are you charging for a piece <sighs> like that? I don't know. I don't sell a lot of pieces. I wish I did, though. But I can tell you it takes a long time to make. 200, <laughs> 300, 400. Sounds great. Uh, <laughs> Look, if somebody can buy that for $200 I, I, I'm, or $300, I'm, this is ridiculous. I'm Seriously. poor, so anything's appreciated. <laughs> How about a piece like this? Uh, um, would you take $300 for something like this? Yes, I would. Uh, how about a piece like this? Would you take $300 for a piece like of this? Of course, yes. Well, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> these are worth far more than that. But yeah. again, isn't that funny? You're a starving artist. Uh, uh, you've been doing it a while, obviously. You yeah, get well, into that. And I've heard it called zone. I know because I'm yeah. an abstract artist. And you, when you get into the zone, you don't get into the zone. Oh yes. Oh, okay. Because yes. so I was going to say every artist lives to get into the zone. Oh, absolutely. That's why we're here. That's right. <laughs> and uh, uh, a lot of people don't really understand what that is. Uh, they don't necessarily get that from I, their work. I think a lot of people experience it because it's biologically programmed into all our bodies. If your skill set is just meeting enough progress that you're working and you're getting some positive results, and next thing as you know, an artist. as an artist, so you know okay. you're in the zone when you're having when you when you're working and you find yourself kind of smiling to yourself because you're having such a good time, and the next thing you know, five hours go by, and you didn't even realize it. That's what that's the zone. Is when hours and hours, it doesn't even seem like work because you're just having such a good time. I think if more people, other than yeah. the artist, could get into the zone, we probably wouldn't have wars. We'd probably have more art. Uh, that zone is very, very important. I mean, yeah. once you're in it, people have to understand. When you're in the zone, there's nothing like it. It's great. I always go by. It's a good uh, place to be. Well, what's next? You do show, uh, do you have any art shows coming up? Uh, not that I did open studios this past fall, and I have a place at a coffee shop now. All right, down <laughs> on East Pearl Street, West yep, Pearl Street. West Pearl Street. All right, it's a coffee shop. I know where it is. I can't think of the name. I can't think of the name either, but I have a lot of stuff in the wall there at, the, at this coffee shop down on East Pearl Street. Well, I'll tell you what, if you've got pieces like this and you take $300 for something like this or $300 for something like this, this is ridiculous. Uh, how long does it take you to do pieces like this? Well, um, it really depends. As I'm evolving as an artist, and I've been doing ceramics almost full time for the last uh, six years or so, it take, the, the time span is getting shorter and shorter. 
this when I made it was like 50 hours. How many? I think it was like 50 hours. 50 hours. Something <clears throat> like that. So, but I'm getting to the point now where it's getting, the time to make stuff is getting shorter and shorter as my skill level increases. The more you do it. The more I know, like the more years you work on a craft, you know, like the I was telling you, you know. earlier, like in the book Blink, or the TED conference, the Blink, uh, it takes about 10 years to get really proficient at something. You have to do it like 40 hours a week for like 10 years. But it's getting shorter and shorter. So um, I, if I were to make this today, because this is kind of an older piece that I made, it would, I'm guessing it would probably take less time. 25 hours? Yeah, maybe. Okay. So let me see. $300 divided by 50. Uh, not counting the, the, the odd itself, not counting the materials put in there. Uh, we make about 15 cents an hour until we get known. But these for $300 are ridiculous. They, they should be sold. You're not yeah. charging enough. But you know what? If, if you can't let money be your primary motivation to do everything in life, don't you think? You can't make everything in the world about money. You're talking to another artist. Yeah, I, so, I agree with you. So, well. yeah, you know, sometimes I do those calculations in my head. Well, I'm making 50 cents an hour. I mean, I'll, I've spent, like, thousands of dollars and years of my time. And I'm not going to get that in money. But this is my dream. It's one of the Trisha's kick the bucket lists. And, you know, I almost have them all. And part, part of, you know, one of my dreams is I wanted to be a fine artist. So... You know, I make something and it lasts forever. I'm really psyched. Well, you're not going to believe this, but our half hour is over. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. If you <laughs> and like... I said everything I wanted to say in the half hour. I was talking fast, right? I fit it all no, in. It, you got, believe me, you're a lot in. <laughs> I got, I got a, a lot of you. I got a lot. I tried to squeeze in some of my art theories and throw my art theories at you real quick. Well, we, we may do this again with you. Okay. I, I think we will. But you're invited when we do the Art Show Inside Studio. Yeah. You are invited to come in. Yes. You'll be one of the artists. Yeah. Uh, as people know, Art Show Art Sales is a program by Access Nashua here in the city of Nashua at your station, Access Nashua. This is Art Show Art Sales. And what we do is we introduce you to people. And then we close the studio down one day, make an art gallery out of it, and we have people come in, look at the artists, look at the work, buy some of the work, and that's how we uh, make a contribution to uh, the art world. And uh, as you can see, this is what you get after a lot of work. And this is another one of what you get. So thank you very much. Thanks for having me.